Hello, I'm Atubo George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Can we, can we make demand for our daily bread already? Are you ready? Remember, He is with you. Say, Father, I demand right now for my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Man, praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God. I'll share with you yesterday. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Because, see, the earth is full of God's mercy. That's what I'll share what I was sharing with you yesterday. Anything you are doing, anything you're giving, you're paying your bills, you're paying your rent, paying your children's school fees, you're shopping for groceries. Yes. Oh, it's a seed that you are sowing. Now, why are you sowing that seed? As long as you have it today to give. As long as you have it. If all you have is to buy a piece of bread, a loaf of bread, if that's all you have, it's enough. You know, I, I, sometimes I just feel sorry for ministers because they're going to answer to God for it. You see, every teaching you give that makes God's children draw back from doing what is right, you will answer God for it. Oh, you will. You will. Jesus spoke about it. You know, people just wake up and say, eh, all these prosperity preachers, all these... The gospel itself is prosperity. See, you can't take prosperity out of the gospel. If you do, you've taken the gospel, so nothing is left. The problem is people don't know what the gospel is. Yes. So there is no such thing as prosperity gospel. The gospel is prosperity. There is prosperity gospel. All these prosperity preachers now see the problem is not what they preach the problem is you your understanding now they may not even have the right understanding but what they teach they teach there's a truth in what they teach but you see the problem is always in the execution okay for example tithing is truth the thing that is wrong with the is the way people tithe yes because now they don't understand what God intended when he even talked about the tithing. Now, because someone doesn't understand that, he comes up and says, eh, we are not supposed to tithe. It's wrong to tithe. I told you, they will answer to God. They, everyone who have come up, forget the false preachers. The false preachers, that one, they won't even exist when God is asking his questions. But the ones who were deceived, the true ministers that were deceived and they started teaching because they, they lack understanding. Okay? They start telling you, you don't need to tithe for God to bless you. They lack understanding. That's just the truth. They lack understanding. Now, now here's the problem. The problem is not the teaching on tithing or what you call the doctrine on tithing. The problem is the execution of the tithing. Okay? Now, You've heard me say on this broadcast, the tithe belongs to God, so give it to Him. That solves the problem. How do I give it to Him? Ask Him. Now, if you don't hear the voice of God, then you have a problem, okay? You can't say you're a child of God if you don't hear the voice of God. So, we are supposed to teach God's children how to hear the voice of God where tithing is concerned, okay? Now, the same thing, people who teach you to sow seed, there's nothing wrong in their teaching. The problem is now, how you sow the seed. See, it is God that ordained, I was sharing that with you yesterday, it is God that ordained it in the covenant he made with Noah. As long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest shall never seed. cease. He said, as long as the earth remains, are we still on the earth? Is the earth still existing? Yes, then it means that law is still working. Ah, Jesus, we, Jesus, ah, 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 ah. The, the covenant. What God said was, as long as the earth remains. Don't edit his word. Now, the problem now is people without understanding take advantage of your life and say, sow seed into my life. Okay? 
Now, you don't know that you have already been sowing seed all day, all week. All, I mean, you, you enter a, a bus, you paid for that fare, you sow a seed. You didn't know that. That's why I'm teaching you what I'm teaching you. Okay? Now, um, the same thing with tithes. So, you get angry that I've been paying my tithes in that church for 20 years. And all I see is that the pastor is buying new cars and, and buying jets and, and things like that. Now, you see, now you begin to think that it's your tithe that you, you're paying, that you used to get that, okay? Now, what you don't understand is the pastor was not your problem. Your, the problem is because with yourself, you didn't understand how to tithe. Now, if you were tithe in the right way, you won't think that. Okay, if God was the one directing you to give your tithe, even if he commanded you to give it to that pastor, you wouldn't think that thought because your mind is that, well, it's the Lord that commanded me to do it, to give it there. So that's between him and God. Okay, now if God commands you to give your tithe to whoever, wherever, and you, you're just simply obeying God, you won't get involved in all this stuff. Okay, yeah, because when people talk about that, you... Because most times when they, when they say, eh, all these tight preachers, they are collecting your money, then you realize that, no. If you say the preacher is collecting my money, the widow I gave my tithe to, did she collect my money? Okay, that other fellow that God instructed me to give my tithe, that when I, when I gave him my tithe, he told me that that was just his house rent that he paid. Would I say he's chopping my money? See, so it is the people who are not doing things right that they trap. You understand? So someone comes and say, all those pastors are just collecting your tithe and they are living large on it. And I say, hmm, it's true. See, the preachers were never your problem. Your problem was with yourself. You didn't know how to execute what the truth was. Okay? The same thing with that. That's why I began to teach you what I was teaching yesterday. See, seed time and harvest is real. Because the gospel is prosperity, like I said earlier. The gospel is prosperity. Go find out. The gospel is prosperity. No, no, no. The gospel is the salvation of our soul. Okay, when your soul is saved, what next? Wait until you go to heaven, right? Yeah, people's minds are just messed up. They've not sat down with God. You know, I do that. I, I am not the kind of person that will just take things for what they said. When there are areas where I get rebellious, I've been like that naturally. <laughs> yeah, I remember when I was in secondary school, SS1. You know, if you're in this part of the world, I got into this new school. It's a Christian, so supposed to be a Christian school. It was a Christian school, yeah. And uh, this was many years ago. And my first day in school, I got suspended from school. Why was I suspended? Because I didn't call the principal daddy. Now, I got into that school. I was in class, first day in class. And then the principal walks in. And you know how they beat the desk and everybody stands up and greets, you know. So normal, you know how to greet Sa, you know. So they beat the desk. Good. Everybody stood up. I stood up also. And then we all went. Good morning. I was about to say, sir, and I heard the whole class say, daddy. The shock on my face was too clear. The principal noticed me. <laughs> he noticed me. Like, I, I was so shocked. Like, daddy. <laughs> so, he, because he noticed me, he, he told everybody to beat again. And then, we all greeted. I still maintained, good morning, sir. He was watching me. Now, in my mind, I was wondering, why do you, why do they call the principal daddy? I'm, I'm not going to say what I don't understand. <laughs> lest, lest I fall into their judgment. I was not going to do that. Now, 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 and then eventually, he said, everybody, he said, you, keep quiet. Everybody greet, pointing to me. And they all greeted, good morning, daddy. And I said, me alone, I should greet. I said, good morning, sir. They said, step out, I step out. Follow me to my office. They said, do you want to remain in this school? I said, yes, sir. He said, okay, I'm giving you one week suspension. One week or two weeks, I will remember. 
to go and decide if he wants to be in this school or not. Now, my question was, he didn't let me ask my question. My question was, why do you call, why, why would the students call the principal? It was very strange to me. Because if I want to do something, I want to be sure I understand it very well. <laughs> now, so, so I won't jump into something until I get the full understanding of it. How much more with God? I've told you before, this is what I spend my life doing. I spend my life digging and saying, Lord, I don't get. Why would you say this here? And that's why the depth of revelation the Lord have exposed me to. I'm, I'm working on a book presently and, and I trust God it will soon be ready and out. Because there are some things, you know, taking time to teach in 20 minutes will just not do the job. So we need to compile some of these thoughts in a whole book so you sit down with it and you are just full of God's wisdom and knowledge. I'm telling you the truth. So most times when you hear preachers speak and you just see their ignorance and they are ignorant not because God wants them ignorant. Well, maybe some of them, like Jesus said, God, I've given them slumber eyes. <laughs> God. Yeah. Because if your heart is genuinely seeking after him, you can't say things. I, I, I've been a preacher for many years, okay? I hardly have thought a wrong thing three times. Hardly. Hardly. Now, it's, it's just the way God has helped me. Maybe, you know, sometimes we get excited because we hear something from somewhere. You know, we're like, wow, that thing sounds great. And then you're preaching it. And you preach it the first time. And somehow, the, the whole preaching is, is nice, but then you make a statement and you feel a check in your spirit. Okay? Maybe after you, you continue and then you're done, you, you forget. You're teaching again and then you're saying that thing again. And like, ah. Now you know that, ah, oh, okay, the last time I got a check here. Now as a smart person, what did you go back to? The Lord, what's going on? What's this thing? And the Lord said, that's not what I said, though. Huh? I didn't say that. Okay, so what's the truth? Then he begins to take me through. I'm like, oh, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can't remember preaching the wrong thing more than three. So when you hear me say, I, I fear pastors who come up after 20 years of preaching, 10 years of preaching, 15 years of preaching, to say, I just found that I've been preaching the wrong message. I fear you. I can understand when someone says, I've been in the wrong place for this long. Okay? I can understand. But say, I'm teaching. You are teaching the wrong things for 10 years, 20 years, 15 years. You are not called. Where was the Holy Ghost in your life? That's the question I want to ask all these years now if i wasn't a preacher i would maybe i would not understand what you're saying but i know how the holy spirit brings checks i know you finish teaching a thing and then you're kneeling down there and say lord thank you i've had experiences like, the lord thank you and the lord says you said something wrong today what did i say wrong and then he begins to ha ah! what do we do he said don't worry i'll give you an opportunity to correct it Thank you. And then you don't have to go, oh, yesterday I preached something wrong and today I want to come and correct it. No, he gives you the wisdom. Why? How does he give you? He opens up the truth. Now you go teach that truth and the people you're teaching will see the light and they, they see, because whatever the Heavenly Father have not planted will be rooted out. That's how he roots. He doesn't root it out by coming to tell you, yesterday I preached the wrong thing. You just confuse the people the more. But when you pray, because that thing you planted yesterday, it will not stay. Now, when you now bring the truth, uh -huh, it will uproot it and the real thing will stay. So it's the same thing, you know, that's why I don't, I don't go for um, all this uh, correctional gospel. No, teach the truth. When you teach the truth, those that are of the truth, it will be planted in their heart. It will stay in their hearts. You don't hear me come out and say, some people are selling handkerchiefs, some people are selling, hey, sell what you want to sell. 
as long as you have people to buy. My problem is not with the sellers. The problem is with the buyers. If there were no buyers, there would be no sellers. If you say, oh, this, this handkerchief contains the anointing. If you buy it for 50,000 Naira, the anointing that will work in your life and everybody is just looking at you. And when you finish talking, they say, okay, thank you. And they all leave. You will not go and sell it again. But because you do that, people will rush out and say, hey, hey, you a child of God. You follow and rush out. And there is no check in your spirit that, hey, where are you going to? Something is not wrong with the preacher. Something is wrong with you. So there is no point discussing those kind of things. There is no point. Can we just stick with the truth? Because when you now tell, that one is wrong, this one is wrong, then even the ones that are right, you now make people to, they become antagonists. And then they are looking at this, how do we know this one is true? So you're casting doubt in people's hearts. And, and so Satan is actually using you without your knowledge. That's the truth. So sowing seed, the message of seed faith is 100% accurate. Now, because people lack understanding, okay? The same thing as a child of God. If you tie it right. If you tie it right, nobody will be complaining that, oh, this pastor is using our money to do. No, 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 no. So that's what I'm teaching what I'm teaching. You go to the grocery store, you are sowing a seed. I was telling, I said, even if it's one loaf of bread that you have, money to buy one loaf of bread. You remember that widow of Zarephath said, this is all I have. And what did God, did God made her employ the, 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 the seed faith principle? Give it. So this money I have can only buy one loaf of bread. Eh, eh, buy it. What are we going to use to eat the bread? Hey, buy the bread. Let the money go. Father, I release this money. Because you see that shop? They need to sell that bread today. Okay? That's their faith. So I partner with their faith. I give them the money. I take the bread. They are happy that they've sold one loaf today. I'm carrying my bread home. Guess what? God has seen me. I've acted. I cooperated. The mercy of God comes upon me. Because I have done that, the bread is not your harvest. Uh-uh. The, I know. That's why everything you do, you must do in faith. Buying the bread is by faith. How is it faith? Because I connected it with God's principle. I'm going to sow my money seed into that business of bread making. And I'm going to take that loaf of bread. So I pay it at the cashier, take my bread. And I'm just walking home and rejoicing and blessing the Lord for the opportunity to partner in their business. And as I'm rejoicing, I'm going home, my phone rings. Somebody calls me, ah, how are you doing? I just feel led in my heart as you send me some money. Now you're wondering how. You don't know, you just sow the seed. Yeah. <laughs> oh, glory. That's why some of us never get broke. Why? We're always sowing. That be, I'm teaching so that you will know. The problem is not that you're not sowing. You are sowing, but you don't know how to receive your harvest. You don't know. how. Did you, why don't you know? Because you didn't know what I was teaching right now. When the Bible says, be anxious for nothing, but in all things, by prayer and supplication, make your request known to God. What do you think he was telling you? Don't be anxious. Why? Because you are actually doing the right. You know, when it comes to hearing the voice, I have seen this with a lot of people. Oh, Pastor Tupac, how do I start hearing the voice of God? I said, very simple. I said, this is how God speaks. This is how, guess what happens? That means God has been speaking to me and I didn't know. Yes, that's the truth. I can't make God speak to you. So the problem is not God speaking. The problem is always with your hearing. And not that you don't hear him. You didn't know he was the one speaking. Yeah. So it's the same thing I'm teaching you. You've been sowing seeds, but you didn't know you were sowing seeds. I'm teaching you now so that you can begin to receive your harvest. Holy Kabada Bradisha Dando Brene. You bought groceries yesterday 
and today you're wondering, eh, 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 he's about to finish. Relax, relax. I sowed seeds yesterday. I'm going to receive today, praise God. I will buy groceries today. When we ask God for our daily bread, it's his mercy we're demanding of him. And because the earth is full of his mercy, we are acting and living our lives in, in, in such principles and the blessing of God is flowing in our lives. Praise God. And my time is up. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I just bless you, Lord. Thank you for wisdom, revelation, and understanding. Even as it's pouring out, everyone under the sound of my voice is hearing and rejoicing in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. So exciting to share God's word with you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.